the Lord be with you. Well, good morning and welcome on today, this beautiful sunny Sunday. It's the 12th Sunday after Trinity. And I do hope that the weather is as nice where you are as it is here today in our garden. It really is a joy to be in the sunshine. If you'd like to follow our readings in your Bibles today, they are from the Book of 1 Kings, Psalm 84, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, and John's Gospel, chapter 6. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us share God's presence with us now. Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess to you, before the whole company of heaven and one another, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our collect for today, the special prayer for the twelfth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of 1 Kings. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the Israelites, before King Solomon in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Then the priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place, in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him. You promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your children look to their way to walk before me, as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father, David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Have regard to your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry 
and the prayer that your servant prays to you today. That your eyes may be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there. That you may heed the prayer that your servant prays towards this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place. O hear in heaven your dwelling place. Heed and forgive. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays towards this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You're a reading now from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength, till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose way of life is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here are verses from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. This he said in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Many of his disciples, when they heard it, said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples murmured at it, said to them, Do you take offence at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you that do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who those were that did not believe and who it was that should betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples drew back and no longer went about with him. Jesus said to the twelve, Will you also go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Pray for me also, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known the mystery of the Gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may boldly declare it, as I must speak. Those are the words of St Paul at the end of today's reading of the extract of his letter to the Ephesians. Now for some years I've had that passage printed out and stuck on the side of my computer screen so that I can read it daily. So powerful do I find those words. As is usually the case, there's a lot going on in today's lectionary readings. But it all seems to lead to one message, recognition of the power and constancy of God. The reading from 1 Kings is really King Solomon's prayer of dedication for his new temple. The temple is probably what Solomon is known for mostly, apart from his wisdom. And it's his wisdom that shines through here in this prayer, when he's saying to God, I know that heaven and earth cannot contain you, much less this temple I have built. Please, whenever anyone prays to it, towards this place, hear their prayer. Solomon recognised that God cannot be contained in any building, however magnificent it is. The psalmist is also praying about God's dwelling place and is longing for it, but again recognises that God does not dwell in any building. This is a prayer of longing to be with God, knowing that one day in God's presence is worth more than a thousand without it. And Paul's letter to the Ephesians is rich with symbolism of the armour of God, in which he exhorts the people to clothe yourselves with the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit. In other words, get whatever help you can from God to be able to defend your faith. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. But arriving at today's extract from John's Gospel, we find the Jews arguing amongst themselves and rebelling. What Jesus is saying is seen as a scandal when he says that those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me. Of course, this has long been one of those difficulties presented by those who are not of the Christian faith regarding the Eucharist, Holy Communion. But, like many passages of Scripture, there is a matter of interpretation. Jesus has been trying to bring them, the Jews in this case, but I think it applies equally to us today, to think more deeply than the physical. But they cannot follow him. Jesus is saying that he is the very embodiment of God who gives us life. By receiving him fully, we will live in him and become like him. Now these are challenging words indeed, to believe in Christ is to accept that his never-failing nourishment comes at a price, the price of broken flesh and spilled blood. 
Christ invites me, all of us, into a life of dynamic intimacy, where he is the source of my life. I want to live out of God's love, not any lesser love. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? Well, so say the disciples. But like many, I too sometimes find the Eucharist difficult to accept. My faith in the clear words of Jesus and my experience of the consolation it gives me help me to believe it. What looks like bread and wine are the body and blood of Jesus, given to me as my food and drink. I thank Jesus for this most wonderful of gifts and ask him to strengthen my faith when it weakens. When Jesus asked if the disciples also wanted to leave him, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. I stay with these words. I let them resound in my heart, challenging and encouraging me as I find myself uttering them to Jesus. I ask myself, as you might want to ask yourself, how do I understand the part played by doubt in my belief? Can I recognise the, the watershed moments in my life? in my relationships, in my faith. To whom can we go? Well, is Jesus the best show in town? Talk with Jesus about this. Talk with Peter. What evidence do I see in my life experience to say that I have come to, to know Jesus as the Holy One of God? If I listen to Jesus asking me, do you also wish to go away? I hear the pain in his question. How do I reply? How would you reply? I ask myself, as you may wish to ask yourself, are there aspects of Jesus' teaching that I find too difficult to accept? What are they? Can I speak to Jesus honestly about them? And can I be open to hearing what he says in response? What about you? Do you want to go away also? The teaching and miracles of Jesus left his hearers with a decision. To believe and follow Jesus, or to follow the crowd and go their separate ways. Well, today is no different. Fewer practice their faith and truly open themselves to the guidance of the Holy Spirit when they have decisions to make. Lord, to whom shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. If this is truly so, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Then the Lord will surely give us the strength to withstand the jibes and the ridicule and give us the courage to follow our own convictions, trusting that the Lord will be with us to enlighten our decisions and the grace to carry them through. Have you made a decision recently which put you among the Lord's followers? If you sometimes find it necessary or difficult to justify your faith in Jesus Christ, and I speak this in a country where it is free to voice your religion, unlike some parts of the world which are very much in the news now, where to proclaim your faith can be fatal, quite literally. If you sometimes find it necessary or difficult to justify your faith in Jesus Christ, remember the words of Paul to the Ephesians. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of fears, fears are still. When striving sees my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh. Just as 
his body lay Lights of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us intercede for others as we pray. Mighty God, in you is our hope and our strength. You are a very present help in all our troubles. Grant that putting on the whole armour of God, we may be able to stand against the powers of darkness and proclaim your saving gospel of love and peace. Hear us now as we bring our prayers for ourselves and for the world. Holy God, holy and strong one, holy and mighty one, all power, all might, all energy and all strength comes from you. Equip us to stand against the evils of our time. Give us the shield of faith the sword of the spirit, the helmet of salvation, the girdle of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and protect us with the gospel of peace that we may remain loyal to the end. Strengthen all who are working in places of degradation, all who are facing danger, violence and oppression. Lord, you are our hope. Our strength is in you. Lord, guide all who are powerful leaders in our world, all rulers, statespersons and politicians. We pray for all who have power at work as managers, shop stewards and union leaders. We remember all who feel powerless all driven by economic forces. Lord, you are our hope. Our strength is in you. We praise you for all who have revealed your power and presence to us. We pray for all teachers. May they encourage a sense of awe and wonder. We remember especially nursery schools and primary schools. 
and how important education is. We ask your blessings on our homes and our loved ones. Lord, you are our hope. Our strength is in you. Healing God, be with the brokenhearted and all whose spirits are crushed. Bless all who are facing difficult times ahead, all who are struggling to survive, all who are fearful and anxious. We pray for all who are in sickness. Lord, you are our hope. Our strength is in you. We rejoice with those who have triumphed, with all in your nearer presence. We join with all who have found their strength in you. We pray for loved ones who are in your glorious kingdom. Lord, you are our hope. Our strength is in you. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray with confidence the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that completes our short service of morning worship. And as ever, I do hope it's been of some comfort to you. Uh, I know that I get a lot of feedback from those who do enjoy it and find it beneficial. Uh, I'd also like to hear from those of you who think it could be improved in some way. We're always looking at ways to make things better and easier and more appropriate for you. Our church is open once again, despite the COVID situation not having gone away entirely, but we are taking every precaution. We're distancing, we're sanitizing, we're wearing masks, and we will be reviewing in September uh, how we ease these restrictions. But if you would like to join us, Sunday mornings, 9.15, our service of Holy Communion, we will be delighted to see you. If in the meantime, you just wish to continue watching our online services, be assured these will continue every week until we find that nobody wants them anymore. But so far, there are a lot more people watching these than turn up in church. If you feel able to help us financially, and we do very much need it, please uh, go to our uh, financial giving website, hawthorngive.co, and you can make a donation with your debit or credit card. And if you're a UK taxpayer and would like us to reclaim by gift aid the amount you would have paid in tax on the donation, drop us an email and we'll get the details sorted out there and then. Whichever way you care to support us, we're delighted to be able to be with you each week. So I look forward to seeing you again next week. And meanwhile, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.